everybody, it's Dean from the Rhode Island Computer Museum. I'm here today in the Learning Lab again, and we're taking a look at this recently donated uh, Apple Macintosh Classic 2. And we've had quite a few Apple um, you know, Macs donated, but this one here, one, it's in really good shape. It's just, it's really nice looking, very minimal yellowing and, and stuff like that. But some of the accessories that came with it, it's like a perfect little time capsule of using a Mac in the early 90s, using this particular model, which was really, really popular. They, they weren't too expensive. Uh, this one here came out about 1991. They made them until about 1993. So I'm going to bring it around it, take a look at it, the ports. We're trying to turn it on, boot it up, and see what's going on here. All right, so again, this is a Macintosh Classic 2, as you can tell here. It's a nice shaped case, minimal yellowing, and it's got this down here. And this is not a stand for anybody who isn't aware. This is actually a hard drive under here. And this Mac didn't really need this. It, it, it had its own hard drive built in, but early Macs, it lacked hard drives for either you didn't put one in or it didn't come with one. You could get one of these external drives and it would act as the boot drive for the machine. So standard accessories, this is the standard Macintosh keyboard that would have came with this machine and the one button Mac mouse. It also came with uh, this set of the style writer. This is a really nice little printer. It's not too heavy. It's portable per se. You still got to power it up, of course, with, you know, AC power using the power brick here. A lot of these uh, style writers, the early ones and later ones are rebranded Canon machines, but I believe this one was uh, made by Apple or at least made special for Apple by Canon. One of the two all around that there's no Canon indicators anywhere. It's all marked as Apple. Getting onto the main machine itself, you know, nine inch monochrome screen or black and white. It's one standard 1.44 Meg floppy drive, again, standard for the time frame. Earlier models would have had an 800K disk, but by this time we were up to a 1.44 meg, like most PCs and other computers at the time. We'll spin this around and take a look at the back. Now, as you can see, there's quite a bit going on back here with all the everything hooked up. And again, like I said before in the intro, this is a really good example of a standard, you know, early 90s compact Mac setup. I mean, some people had just the machine and a keyboard, but a lot of people had other accessories. We have the, looking up here, this is the microphone plugged into the microphone port back here. You know, obviously power. You know, this right here is the ADB port going to the keyboard and mouse ultimately. And now this big connector, this is the um, drive for the SCSI disk. So um, now we do pronounce it as SCSI generally, but it is S-C-S-I. And the port kind of looks like this symbol right here. But if we disconnect that, you see it's a 25 pin SCSI connector. And once you kind of loop around all the big cables here, it does ultimately go into this hard drive piece at the bottom. And this other connector, again, this is for anybody who's you know unaware of it. The way SCSI worked back in the day is SCSI devices were chained together. So you would feed the signal from the computer into the first device, and then that device would then chain to another device. But if the, if the uh, device you have here is the last in line, or the next one was, on that next port, you had to have a terminator, which is this guy right here. And this would basically terminate the SCSI bus so it wouldn't look for any more devices and would boot up as normal. So that has to be there or else your devices will not work properly. As far as booting up with a hard drive like this, now again, this has a hard drive in it, so it doesn't need this, but if you were using a compact Mac, you would power this up first, wait a second, and then power this up so it could this would be ready for the computer to see this and boot up. As far as the other ports back here, we do have the printer port, which is a, a little DIN connector. Uh, this is an external floppy drive for either a uh, a five and a quarter or another three and a half if you did need it. And it does have a communications port back here commonly used for a modem. There's no ethernet built in or anything like that. And it is hard to see, but the model number on this is an M4150. Again, that does designate a Mac Classic 2 made from 91, 1093. And it would come standard with, I believe, a 16 megahertz processor and two megs of RAM. So we're gonna spin it back around again plug it in and boot it up as we spin it around one thing i'm seeing is this little speaker grill right here i believe this one did have a built-in speaker some models had them in the front i think with the case aesthetics they went for with this kind of blocking off the old grills that used to be here on the earlier models they moved the speaker to the side 
and that was a mono speaker. There's no speaker on this side. For anybody wondering what this is, now this is an accessory that definitely screams 80s and 90s. I'll show you what this does. So if you were doing some office work, some school work on this, and you need to type something in from a piece of paper, well, you hung that piece of paper right there, and you typed, and you copied it right there. That's, I know it's simple, but again, the whole time capsule aesthetic of this particular donation is amazing to me. You know, this setup right here, you know, the computer, keyboard, mouse, the printer sitting right here, the optional SCSI hard disk. It's just, this is something I would have seen. I, I wasn't a Mac user back in the day, but I would have seen this definitely at a friend's house. I remember a friend having a similar setup, but his was the kind that needed this type of hard drive. It didn't have one built in. All right, so we are plugged in for power. So I'm gonna reach back here again, turning the hard drive on first. Again, not that it needs it, because this has a hard drive built in, but now we'll turn on the Mac itself. Now. Th these compact backs are pretty popular for having uh, capacitor leaks on the motherboard or the logic board of these devices. And that will lead to kind of garbled video issues on these machines. This one though, I believe boots up fine. Now these machines, what it came with are roughly system six on them. And I think they went up to like system 7.6 as their, their max. They couldn't do eight on these machines. Any of these compact Macs that were the black and white monochrome variants. I think they all max out at system 7.6. Again, once you hit system eight, you really need a color display. If you had a class, uh, Mac Classic, the color version that came a little later, you definitely would have something a little nicer. All right, so it looks like we're about booted up. So I'm seeing here, not sure I should be seeing a second hard drive right here that indicates this guy's running. I'm not seeing that. Now, I did do a test boot of this a couple days ago, and it did show up there, so I'm not sure what's happening there. But we do have the Mac hard drive, which hopefully should have some software on it we can check out. Oh, yeah, we got plenty of stuff in here. And before we jump into some software, let's check out the specs on this. So any old Mac, hit the app. We'll go to about this Macintosh. And as you can see, we are looking at System 7.1 installed on here, copyright up to 1992. And this machine does have actually four megs of RAM in it. So it looks like this did get an upgrade at some point from the standard two. Um, they may have actually come like that from the factory as well. Everything I can find online says these would have come with two megs and, you know, four being the, the max on them. But this one has four, you know, could have been a dealer upgrade or just factory. So going through here, we do have a sufficient amount of software. Backgammon, Hangman, Mac Concentration, Monopoly, Space Invaders. So just check things out. Let's let's run Space Invaders. And it looks like a pretty simple version. Again, I, I gotta stress anybody using one of these. They are fun machines, but they are monochrome. So, you know, things are simple on these. So we can hit play up here, and there we go. And we're playing. Now Looks like I'm doing very bad. The mouse is moving my gun at the bottom, and the aliens are coming down. Closing that up, let's see what else we have on here. We have steroids. Not sure what that is. Retigo, stunt copter. Now, stunt copter, I believe I've played before. Yes, I have. Funny thing about this, I remember this game and couldn't run the name of it, but here we go. So this is stunt copter, and you're controlling the helicopter. It's a little loose, the controls. I think that's deliberate for how you're playing this game. And you're supposed to drop the guy in the hay. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no, I kind of got him. <laughs> there we go. He did a little backflip. He's happy. Let's drop another one in. There we go. Yes, these are these are really simple games on these machines. I may have seen a couple days ago, if it was playing Kid Picks on here. So Kid Picks is an art program. It's a really simple art program. And of course, the lack of color does limit your creativity. But you can look at that as a limitation and, you know. Whoa, that's a big C. Terrible. But that's okay. <laughs> that's, that's all right. <laughs> no, we are not going to save that. It looks like there's quite a bit of software on here. I gotta say, there's quite a bit of stuff on this on this machine. So 
So we have Super Paint. We'll say Risk is on here. We even have Microsoft Works. So yes, Microsoft programs did exist on Macs at this time. Processor database, spreadsheet, com. Not a whole lot. And of course, they don't call them Word and whatnot. They were all their own names for, for Microsoft Works. Got a nice what you see is what you get editor. And again, if you were typing stuff in from your piece of paper here, you would, you know, type that in as normal. All right, so again, this was our recently donated Macintosh Classic 2 that runs really well. And as it, it is, I just, I can't get over it. It is like a little mini 90s time capsule of computing goodness. So again, thank you for the donation. We thank everybody who makes donations that are very generous to the museum. Hope you guys like the video. Give it a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.